The last topic that we want to look at on the subject of differential equations is mathematical modeling. Um, so a lot of modeling problems involve differential equations. Um, it's not the only technique you can use for, for mathematical modeling of, of physical situations. Obviously, there are a lot of scenarios that can be modeled using mathematics. That's why people study mathematics, because it can be used to describe the real world. I mean, also because it's fun, but it has a lot of use in describing the world. Uh, this one is actually from the section on linear differential equations, but it's a good lead into some of the other things we're going to look at uh, very soon. So standard problem here, right? You have, you have an object that's being dropped maybe from a, maybe it's from like a passing airplane. Let's draw the airplane in. There it is. Okay. And it's flying above the ground at some height, let's say why not, and we're going to drop a package from the plane, right? So there's a package that falls out, and it's going to fall towards the ground, and we would like to describe that object's trajectory, right? Um, so essentially we would like to find, well, depending on, on how we want to do this, we could certainly talk about simply the height y of the object, if we want to describe the height as a function of time. Um, or maybe it makes sense to actually first, let's just look for the velocity, right? Um, so look for velocity v. Now I'm drawing that as a vector, maybe that's not the appropriate thing to put in here, but um, we, we want to indicate that the velocity is downward. Um, it's a one-dimensional problem, so we can also just use a negative sign there to let us know that we're talking about downward trajectory versus upward trajectory, assuming that we're measuring y from the ground up, right? So the going up is increasing y. All right, so how do we do this? Well, first thing that we need to solve a problem like this is Newton's laws, right? Um, so <clears throat> one of Newton's laws is, is the f equals m a, right, so force is mass times acceleration, okay? We want to use that here. Um, in the case of acceleration due to gravity, we can, we can note the following. The, the force exerted by gravity is, well, mass times the acceleration due to gravity. We're just going to call that g. Uh, if we want to indicate that the force is acting downwards towards the ground, maybe we put minus mg in there. Okay, now acceleration, well, we can write acceleration as dv dt, right? It's the derivative of velocity. Um, if we wanted to do this in terms of position, of course, it's also the uh, second derivative of y with respect to t. But let's stick to first order differential equation because that's what we know how to solve. Okay. Um, all right, um, now. We can put all this together and, and we get a very simple differential equation, right? We would just get something like this. We would just get dv dt. Okay, so there's acceleration. So m times a is equal to minus mg. And we solve, it's, I mean, this is a constant, right? It's a constant, so we, v would just be that constant times t plus some initial condition and in fact, we simply get, you know, and m's cancel, right? We can cancel the m's. And we get something that simply looks like v is equal to the initial height minus acceleration times time. Okay, that's easy enough. Uh, but it's not that realistic because it doesn't take into account air resistance. So if we want to account for air resistance, so the air is, is going to, you know, act against the direction of acceleration, right? So the air resistance is going to apply a force going upwards, trying to slow this thing down. And so if we want to account for air resistance, well, then we have kind of a, so we can call this maybe the force due to gravity. And now we have a force um, due to maybe the air, let's call it Fa maybe which is going to look like this. It's going to be some constant k 
times velocity. Now, in, in a lot of models, there's some power of the velocity that comes in. And one of the ways that you try to kind of figure this out is you play around with different models. You solve the models, you figure out what the model predicts for the actual velocity as a function of time, and then you go and you measure the velocity as a function of time for some falling object. And, and you try to find the right function that works, right? So you do a lot of trial and error, you figure out the value of p that works. Um, this k here is a constant. And that k is essentially a measure of the air resistance, right? So k is going to depend on, on things like the, the shape of the object, right? Um, is it something like a, a ball, uh, like a solid ball that falls easily? Is it something like a feather, right? So, so this constant is, is going to depend a lot on the shape of the object, maybe also properties of the air, right? And this power p, that's something that would probably have to be determined experimentally. Okay, so we could put that in, right? And if we, if we add air resistance, Well, then we get something that looks like this. Our, our force is going to be now minus mg plus kv to the p, right? So we set f equal to ma, and so we get m dv dt is equal to minus mg plus k v p, right? We can set it up like that. Um, now, this is actually separable, right? We can, we could also, we could write this as m over minus mg plus k v p times dv is, is equal to simply dt. We can do that. Um, the problem is that without knowing the value of p, integrating the, the left-hand side here is going to be problematic, right? Um, because if, if p is, let's say, equal to 1, well, then we know we can solve that with simply a logarithm. If p is equal to 2, maybe we're going to do partial fractions, maybe a trig substitution, but probably partial fractions, right? Um, for p equals 3, 4, and higher, right? Um, so for p equals 1, p equals 2, we know we have techniques we can use. For higher powers, Maybe we don't know how to solve this analytically, right, with, uh, without a lot of difficulty. Um, so what we do instead is we say, okay, why don't we, why don't we for now, let's assume that P is equal to 1, right? Um, maybe this is not the best model. Maybe when we compare with experiment, we find that this doesn't quite work the way we want it. Um, but why do we assume P is equal to V? Well, if we assume P is equal to V, we get a linear equation, right? Then we get, if I divide through by the mass of the object, dv dt, right, minus k over mv is equal to minus g, right? And that's a problem that we, that we know how to solve, right? We know what to do with that. Um, we can even put in our integrating factor. We can go through, we can solve, right? We've got a fair amount of experience with this now. Um, this is typically where things head once you kind of spend enough time doing these things, right? Um, and this is maybe now we're at the interface of math and other subjects like physics or chemistry or something like that, where um, maybe, maybe the math is still figuring out how to solve that differential equation. We know how to solve that, right? We've just seen a bunch of examples. We know what to do. Um, but a lot of the time, the hard work is not in solving the equation, although it might be hard. Um, a lot of the hard work is getting that equation in the first place, right? It's, it's finding your physical assumptions, putting things together, figuring out how it all fits, get that model. Once you have the model, solve the differential equation. Solution allows you to make predictions. Once you have those predictions, you can compare with you know, the actual observed values that you find, and you can test that model and see whether it's any good. Um, if it doesn't fit the values that you observe, then you go back and you see if you can make adjustments to the model that give you better results. Um, that's typically how we do these things. Um, so we're going to look at a bunch more examples, modeling um, coming from the, uh, the last section on differential equations. 
before we move on to something completely different. <laughs>